Hey, what's going on my friends? Uh, I hope that this isolation isn't getting to you too much. Um, you know, that can be kind of dwelling and uh, you know, it's good to remember that everyone's in the same boat. So, you know, FaceTime, Skype, chat with your friends, read positive material, uh, put your mind uh, to work, right? Get, get busy with other stuff, keep your mind off of it. Uh, I'd be lying if I said that it's not getting to me either, right? I'm pretty active, I like being social, I like moving around um, and uh, I'm not allowed to do that right now, right? It's probably for the best. But uh, anyway, enough of that stuff. Uh, one thing I've been talking to my clients a lot about is that there's a struggle with a lot of people right now when it comes to their workouts. And that is people don't like working out at home. And the reason behind that is that the majority of us, we like to have like a ritual space, right? Like a church, a place that we go to work, right? A, thing, a place that we go to do the thing, right? And, and when, you, when you can have access to a gym, you can get there, you can drive there, you can travel there, you can walk there, whatever put the headphones on and get to work. That's where you do that thing, right? And you can leave it there. You can get in that headspace. And uh, we don't have that opportunity right now, right? So what you need to do to your best ability with what you got right now at home is create that kind of ritual space and headspace, that ritual space being physical and the, the, the headspace being obviously mental uh, to get into your workouts, to get into the zone for the lack of better terms, right? So I don't wanna work out my living room because I'm spending all day there, right? I'm working on the laptop, I'm communicating with clients, uh, and then at night I'm sitting on the couch and I'm like watching movies or reading, right? Um, so I don't really wanna do my workouts in there. I wanna bust out, I wanna get outside, and regardless of the weather, if it's cold or chilly or windy or rainy, um, I wanna get that, that fresh air and that daylight on my skin and in my eyes, because that's also important. Remember, for neurotransmitter production, which helps us keep a uh, healthy circadian rhythm and keeps us happy, right? The happy chemicals. <laughs> So uh, this ritual space of mine is in my backyard. I'm fortunate enough to have a large backyard and uh, this kind of concrete clearing here is a patio and I've just made it my, my space. So when I step into it, I'm doing the work, right? That's what my mind tells me and that's what I'm doing, okay? So today I was playing around with kettlebells and I know a lot of you guys uh, might not have kettlebells, but a lot of people are also asking me, hey, what are some good kettlebell workouts? And uh, I, I used to be I still am, but I used to be a 100% kettlebell enthusiast. I loved working with kettlebells. There's all kinds of inventive flows and circuits you can get going with them. Um, so here's one I was playing around with today. It's real simple. But first and foremost, I wanna clean up a movement that's called the clean, right? Uh, anytime we clean something, it comes from Olympic uh, weightlifting, right? It comes from the ground below the hips and then up to racking it on the shoulder. That's your barbell clean. When it comes to a kettlebell, you can either do double or a single, right? So you're bringing it from below the hips and racking it to the shoulder. First and foremost, with kettlebells, there's only one wrist position and that is a solid wrist, straight line. This and this are inappropriate. You can't do that, right? It breaks the kinetic chain and increases the risk of injury. Okay, so the clean is actually a hip dominant movement. A lot of people, they're shrugging and they're flinging it up with their arms and all shoulder and they're jerking it around. It's a, it's a very fluid hip movement, okay? And what I mean by that is that when I have a kettlebell, one, I'm gonna point the cue I like to use, by the way, there's lots of funny cues that I come up with, is you're gonna stick your thumb in your own butt from the front. Very funny, but you know, you know, you'll know what I'm talking about here in a second. So I'm gonna get down here and boom, basically fling my forearm. This is gonna touch my pelvic bone and in my groin. Fling that off my body with my hips. And this is just a pendulum, right? I'm not really using it too much. The other thing, notice I got my kettlebell deliberately a little bit out in front of me and the handle is neutral, meaning it's not that way, right? It's this way. I'm gonna grab it this way, sink back with my hips a little bit and then get this momentum going so I can, boom, fling it right off the hips immediately, okay? Again, All right? Sit back and as soon as I lift it, momentum is gonna fling it back like a pendulum between my legs and pop, okay? And that's your clean. Notice, I'm not, right? I'm not struggling here. I'm all pop, hips, pop, hips, okay? So what I was playing around with today, I actually did this on my sidewalk, is I got a clean, this is my 50 pound kettlebell, and I like to play around with asymmetrical load quite a bit. That means weight on either side and not, not on both sides evenly. I did 20 lunges, as you can imagine, right, down the street. And after I did my 20, I went into 10 clean and presses. 
on each arm, right? I did 10 on one side and then pop, boom, 10 on the other, right? I took a little rest in between because your heart rate's gonna come up no matter what. You're gonna get a big afterburn effect. It's called EPOC, the excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. Uh, that's very healthy. It increases your HDL, your healthy cholesterols, and allows you to burn more calories at rest uh, throughout the day, up to 18, 24, 36 hours in some cases. So what I did was four total sets, right? 20 asymmetrical lunges, 10 clean presses per arm, rest, other side, 20 asymmetrical lunges, 10 clean presses per arm, per arm, rest, right? I did four sets of that. It's not incredibly long, but if you take a short rest period, say 30 seconds, right? Maybe a 15, 20 minute workout. So by the way, I did this after uh, some pistol squat practice and some goblet squats. So I got enough work in. So if it's something you want to toss in as a quote unquote finisher to your regular workout, uh, by all means, uh, give it a shot because it's very fun. Uh, keeps your mind active, keeps you engaged because there's a lot of movement going on, a lot of things to worry about, especially with an asymmetrical load, meaning it's trying to pull you to one way, right? So your core is gonna stay activated to keep you upright, your brain's working, it's send, sending lots of neural signals to the muscles to synchronize and stop you from falling over or crumbling, right? Uh, so it's very active for the mind too, right? And that's an important thing right now. So, 20 asymmetrical lunges, 10 clean presses per arm, rest, 20 asymmetrical lunges, 10 clean presses per arm, rest, repeat two more times, have fun, play safe, and stay healthy, guys. All right, talk to you soon.